Boom! Alright, what's going on you guys? It's Royce it's Jacob. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Waves News, a series where we cover recent articles and current events that pertain to the markets. These episodes are meant to be more chill, so sit back, grab yourself a drink. Right now, I am currently drinking good old grapefruit spindrift. There may or may not be a splash of tequila in here. So, big cheers to the three-day weekend, you guys. I hope you all have an extremely fun yet safe 4th of July. I know I plan to do so, and I look forward to getting back down to business with you all on Tuesday. Let's drink up, guys. Oh, they pair so well together. All right, guys, before we go over the topic overview, if you guys do want exclusive access to the newsletter, exclusive Sunday Stock Watch YouTube episodes, first link down in the description, 15 bucks a month. And of course, you don't only get the private Sunday Stock Watch video, you get a complete breakdown of my entire portfolio that I update every single trading day during market hours. And with every update, I do send out an email newsletter, the same one you're going to get with the Sunday Stock Watch link, explaining my thoughts, rationalizing the trades I'm making, and everything I feel like is important, all the good stuff every trading day. Okay, so once again, first link down below, 15 votes a month it really means a lot if you guys check that out. But if not, no worries at all. Let's go over the topics we're going to be discussing today. So first up, huge huge news when it comes to the to like the equity markets to the financial markets as a whole actually so Robinhood has 18 million accounts with 80 billion dollars in assets after rapid growth IPO filing shows so probably the most highly anticipated IPO definitely amongst the retail trading crowd is the Robinhood IPO all right so this is what we'll kick it off with of course these are just whispers at this point they just filed Thursday so this is very new news we will of course be following this very closely over the course of the just, just over the progression of this IPO and when it's going to happen and what's going to go down here so very exciting here again we will follow this over the coming weeks the next article we're going to cover, and this actually we're only covering two articles today, going to be nice and simple, nice chill one for the weekend, all right? This one is more of a fun thought experiment. It's titled, Most Investors See Bitcoin Ending the Year Below $30,000, CNBC Survey Shows. So as we read over this, I also want to do a little comment survey with you guys, see where you think Bitcoin is going to end the year personally. If you just want to throw that price target down below right now, feel free to do so. But we will tie this in a little more once again as we go into the article. After the article, we will take a look at the charts. Of course, we got to throw some technicals in here. Can't just keep it strictly fundamental, although that's what these usually are, actually. But, of course, in I, I can't give you guys my price prediction by the end of the year without talking some technicals and trying to do some rationalization on the charts, okay? So, we'll take a look at Bitcoin on the daily after that article. Talk some technicals. Talk some macro, long-term, bird's-eye view technicals. And uh, I'll give you guys my upside and downside price targets and what I personally feel is most likely as we progress through the second half of 2021 all right after that that's pretty much all the business we're going to get to afterwards to close out the video i'm going to do some good old content recommendations it's been a while feels good this first one is a fun one i have recommended it before but in the wake of a new season returning gotta recommend it for you guys again especially if you haven't watched it's such a good show again we'll get into more detail in the end this one's a little funner and then this one is is what i feel is a very very relevant podcast and very beneficial podcast especially if you guys are interested in just just i mean just being a better individual i respect this man a lot tim ferris his book for our work week did change the way i think about just how i structure my life and really did structure me as not only a trader but as an entrepreneur and uh, a business savvy individual when i was when i was like 18 or 19 years old okay so for our work week that book is always in every description of every single one of my youtube videos but this is a great podcast pretty new just uploaded last week so i do recommend you guys check this one out as well again we'll we'll talk i already talked a lot about it but we'll talk more about it at the very end as we close it out okay so before we get to reading the key points and all the good stuff here please you guys i'll just ask to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not new around here and i've also been getting messages about you guys not uh, some of you i assume not getting updated or not having the videos that i post show up so if that's an issue for for you i don't it's rare that i ask to to hit the bell icon the little bell by the subs subscription the post notification bell but if you guys do want my videos if you guys don't want my videos that's perfectly fine to to like pop up when i post them but if you guys do want to know exactly when i post them hit the little bell icon right by the subscription button okay so let's get to reading key points Robinhood again hottest ipo of the year easy 
Q points. Robinhood has grown its funded accounts, those which have bank accounts linked to them, to 18 million in March of this year from 7.2 million in March of 2020, an increase of 151%. That's insane. Assets under custody have ballooned to roughly $80 billion from $19.2 billion last March. A little cool Forex right there. The company said it plans to trade under the symbol Hood on the NASDAQ. Sick, honestly, sick ticker symbol. I would like. I'm so glad they didn't just go to like RBHD or something like that. Hood is a sick ticker, and uh, I look forward to having some hood in my portfolio as soon as they IPO. All right, just for the culture. Even if I don't think it's gonna do well, same as like Coinbase. I'm just gonna pick some up for the culture. Robinhood Markets filed for one of the most anticipated initial public offerings of the year on Thursday, revealing rapid growth resulting in 18 million retail clients and more than $80 billion in customer assets. Unlike many recent IPOs, Robinhood was profitable last year, generating a net income of $7.45 million on a net revenue of $959 million in 2020. It's pretty, pretty decent revenue versus a loss of $107 million on a $278 million in 2019, according to Robinhood's S1 filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission, or the SEC. However, this is a big, big caveat. The brokerage lost $1.4 billion in the first quarter of 2021, tied to emergency fundraising related losses during January's GameStop trading mania. The company generated $522 million in revenue in the first quarter of if 2021 uh -oh, up 309% from the 128 billion dollars earned in the first quarter of 2020 options trading accounts for about 38% of revenue while equities and crypto are 25% and 17% of revenues respectively i mean those good old calls and puts man are really making robinhood some money the brokerage aims to raise 100 million dollars in the public debut robinhood plans to trade under the symbol hood on nasdaq okay so again you guys these are just I mean, not whispers at this point because they did just actually, they did publicly file for their IPO with the SEC. There is no date set, but as I said in the beginning, we will be following this one very, very closely over the coming weeks and months, all right? Hopefully, hopefully within the next 30 to 60 days, you see Hood on your on your Robinhood app. You'll see Hood on your Robinhood app, okay? So that's Robinhood. Let me know what you guys think about this. If you guys are buyers of Hood and when it comes out, again, as I said, um, even if I don't think the IPOs are going to perform well, I'm not the biggest fan of super overhyped IPOs because literally everyone and their mom is going to know about the Robinhood IPO. So I don't really like buying into IPOs initially, but I will buy at least one share just for the culture once again because I love Robinhood and Robinhood for me specifically, not only my net worth, but for the ability that it gave me to scale my YouTube channel. I'm very indebted and very thankful, and I do still love Robinhood even after everything they've done. All right, so that's my thought right there. Again, please let me know your guys' thoughts down below. But in terms of your thoughts, in terms of what I want you to really comment about, this one's a lot more important, okay? So most investors see Bitcoin ending the year below 30K. CNBC survey shows. I don't know if you guys can hear that phone. Shut up, phone. Okay. Wall Street investors largely believe Bitcoin will trend lower to a year to end a year. The phone is distracting me. I'm sorry. Wall Street investors largely believe Bitcoin will trend lower to end a wild year flat, according to a new CNBC survey. Every quarter, we pull about 100 chief investment officers, equity strategists, portfolio managers, and CNBC contributors who manage money about their views, who manage money about their views on the markets for the rest of the year. The survey was conducted from June 23rd to 30th. This survey, where will Bitcoin be by the end of the year? Below 30,000. 44% of them answered that. Or 44% of those who answered said below 30, uh, 33,000. 25% said 40K. 25% said 50K. And 6% said 60K. Okay. So the far majority here, if you want to talk about the majority, actually falls between 40 and 50,000. So if you're going on statistics, I guess you could say 45,000 is going to be is it uh no no i mean not really that's not that's not properly how you average something but um there is a decent amount so 45k is a decent guess but below 30,000 is where 44% of again those who answered fall fell and uh that's where i fall as well okay so let's finish this up and we'll, t we'll hop into the charts and talk a little more specific price targets of the survey respondents 44%, 44% said the world's largest cryptocurrency will finish 2021 below $30,000. That's essentially where it started the year. Bitcoin rallied at one point triple digits, one point triple digits to an all-time high of nearly $65,000 in April from about $29,000 at the end of 2020, according to Coin Metrics. 
However, after an impressive start to the year, Bitcoin got hit by heightened regulatory scrutiny and gave back most of its gains in 2021. Bitcoin last traded at $33,000. 33,000. It's currently right now. It's at yeah, about 33.4, still up more than 10% on the year, which uh, again, it did rally a lot in December, but in terms of 2021, not very impressive. The decline came amid China as China stepped up efforts to stamp out crypto speculation, ordering digital crypt, uh, currency miners to cease operations in a number of regions and urging banks and payment firms not to offer crypto related services. Meanwhile, Cryptocurrency exchange Binance has been banned from operating in the UK by the country's market regulators. So we have covered, of course, these negative tailwinds, these negative fundamental tailwinds, I should say, for Bitcoin. There's technical tailwinds as well, I guess. So just kind of bearish short term all around. You guys know that if you guys have been tuned in lately. But uh, again, you guys, it's not surprising to me personally that uh, Bitcoin, that, that the majority of individuals who answered this survey said it would be below $30,000. And that's where I fall as well. So I do, I guess, fall in the majority, but that's, I, I have to imagine that a lot of these people understand markets, they understand hype cycles, they understand cycles in general. And Bitcoin is the king of cycles. Growth, boom and bust. Again, I don't think this is a bust. It's, it's I guess it's technically a bust, not a crash. It's not like the game is not over by any means, but this is just Bitcoin. If you've watched Bitcoin for a long time, you'd know this is how it goes. And this is just the game and that's okay because this is accumulation time or not yet. So let's talk price targets, okay? Where's the real accumulation in my mind? So once again, if you guys have been tuning in, I do think Bitcoin is gonna play out this macro massive head and shoulders pattern right here. Obviously left shoulder, head, big old head, fat brain, big brain, and then right shoulder, okay? And if this does correctly play out, this will resolve in two places. It's either going to be about $24,500, just say 25K, or $20,000 at the base prior to Bitcoin actually breaking out. Okay, on top of this, this uh, uh, the, what happens when overall, when a trend is broken, when the overall uptrend is broken in a hype cycle, most of the time, this happens on every time horizon, okay, every time scale, you will see a reversion to the mean or a revisit of the initial high of that rally. So once again, that's either going to be $20,000 or $25,000. Where exactly it bottoms out, I don't know. I'm comfortable personally accumulating Bitcoin at $25,000. been saying that for the past month or so now. So that is what I'm waiting for. And again, a reversion to the mean on top of this macro pretty damn textbook head and shoulders pattern leads me to believe that we're probably on our way down just call it 25k but what happens after that when will we see the rally start to pick back up okay i don't know the fundamentals behind bitcoin are stronger than they've ever been in history okay there's more infrastructure being built around bitcoin than ever the market cap is massive it wants it at around this area it surpassed a trillion dollar market cap. That's no small deal at all. It's global, borderless. I mean, all the good stuff that I've been saying for the past year or so, like since I made the YouTube channel, all the praise I've given to Bitcoin. Um, so again, I want to reinforce, reinforce my belief that I'm very, very long-term bullish on Bitcoin and that will not, that will remain unchanged. But short-term, again, just reading the tape, being a technical analyst, um, it just looks, every signal right now is pointing to more downside, okay? So I do think the most likely scenario after we do bottom out around the twenty dollars to $25,000 level is that we trade in this range, okay? So you see yellow is the top end of the range. This orange bar is the mid, is the mid section of the range around 25K, bottom is 20K, okay? So this range ranges from $20,000 to $30,000. And I think that will be the true accumulation phase, okay? I think that's, that's the actual capitulation. That's the true accumulation phase. And historically, this lasts, a couple of years sometimes okay obviously you see a lot of volatility maybe we go above maybe we go below for a little bit but for the most part i think we'll spend at the very least a few months at the very least a few months in this twenty thousand dollar to thirty thousand dollar region actually seeing that accumulation period actually seeing that true capitulation of the overall multi multi-decade bitcoin cycle okay again that's just the game you guys okay so this presents a lot of opportunity once again if you got diamond hands if you got those strong long-term hands um this is a great opportunity for you but that's i mean again you guys that's kind of boring i'm just kind of repeating everything i've been saying for the past couple of weeks now upside price targets okay so what happens if bitcoin does break out what happens if bitcoin just sees a massive fat green weekly candle and sees a breakout sees a breakout of the long-term overall downtrend that's could take us up to this area over here and i'll explain that okay so the second i flip bearish on bitcoin 
and the second I actually liquidated a good chunk of my portfolio, the most I've ever liquidated in my crypto trading career was right here on May 12th, okay? May 12th when Bitcoin broke the overall line of support on its overall uptrend, very strong line of support. Every single trader on the planet was looking at this. That's why you see it. Uh, that's why we saw Bitcoin ultimately fall off a cliff immediately after we saw a daily closure below this is because the line of support on the overall uptrend was broken. So as I always say, you guys, TA 101, previous support will become new resistance. That, that case is especially strong, the stronger the line of support is, okay? So this is about as strong a line of overall support gets. Therefore, I do think it will come back into play at some point in time. When exactly that is, I don't know. But once again, just playing the hypothetical, if Billy, if, if Billy, if Billy does start to rally by the end of the, I don't even know where that one came from. If Billy starts to rally, but good old Bitcoin Billy, if Billy starts to rally by the end of the year, and does retest this previous line of support as new resistance that would take us on january 1st of 2022 to $95,000. so regardless you guys we'd love to see it that would be sick that like so close so close to 100k so the psychological game theory um, aspect if you want to think about this game theoretically here is that everyone's going to be anticipating a hundred thousand dollars if we get that high so therefore 95k would make more sense a peak at ninety five thousand dollars would make a lot more sense to me than a peak at a hundred thousand dollars and uh that's uh, just 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 some foresight that's probably where i'll cash out even more of my bitcoin if we reach about 95k okay so once again you guys let me know down below what your end of year price target where if, if you could just throw out a random number january 1st new year's 2022 what is bitcoin's price answer that below really appreciate your insight okay so and i'll definitely go down there and check it out and uh see uh, i will tell you if i think you're whack or not okay so uh that is all the good stuff i mean i guess that's all the serious stuff this is definitely still good stuff so billions you guys again this it, it like probably almost a year ago at this point is probably when I recommended billions on one of the OG waves weekly videos. Now it's waves news because I used to do this every week. Um, don't do that anymore because again, weekends are, I've kind of just chilled. Weekends are more for the newsletter fam. But uh, again, I, when, when, when I feel it's necessary, when I pretty much, when I feel like I want to do it, to be honest, I do like making these waves weeklies. And uh, I do always recommend this was, I always like recommending content to you guys. Okay especially when it relates to the markets because this show did motivate me a lot like when i was watching this show or over the course of the past couple of years when i was really finding my stride in trading i loved axe like this guy bobby axelrod owns axe capital where i got waves capital from is actually what like this this whole enterprise i have going is legally called as waves capital this guy is where this this show is where i got that from it's axe capital so axe bobby axelrod head honcho right here just the dynamic of everything that goes on here he owns he's pretty much owns like the largest head fund hedge fund in the united states I just i mean it's so i'm not even gonna go into the specifics i will let you guys watch it if you guys do watch it let me know what you think of it down below but this show watching the show made me more motivated like going to sleep watching this show made me more motiv motivated to wake up and start trading and just doing my due diligence and really hitting the charts and, and just doing my thing right so i do highly recommend this to you guys as traders as investors it's just one of those shows that's really entertaining to watch and uh and motivating at the same time especially if you're in this profession okay so check out billions season five is coming back september 5th this is not by any means an ad but i'm super pumped for this date okay so check out billions in terms of a more tangible um in terms of a more i, I would say beneficial i, I mean this is pretty been like as i just said this is pretty beneficial it's not as directly uh directly beneficial but um it's very beneficial this is something that i really do want all of you guys to listen to okay so tim ferris as i said in the beginning um writer extremely successful entrepreneur investor author um wrote the four hour work week one of the arguably the single most maybe um impactful book that i've ever read in my entire life once again as a as a growing entrepreneur as a young man who was who was trying to find his stride and figuring out how he wanted to structure his life um the four hour work week really helped me a lot so once again you guys the link to that is has always been down below but uh, even if you guys don't use that link go go read if your friend has it or something read the four hour work week um especially if you're feeling like you're a little stagnant or something okay but uh, regardless for our work week great this is a is an easy to listen to very um very insightful podcast episode with a man i respect a lot once again tim ferris 518 posted on when was this posted 
I don't know exactly when it was posted. Sometime last week, like June 18th or something like that. Q&A with Sam Curtin, morning and exercise routines, holotropic breath work, ambition for self-compassion, daily practice for joy, ont ont ontological shock, and more. So he does get into health. He gets into life structure. Once again, though, if you guys, even if you guys aren't interested in health, these are pretty tangible things that will allow you to to optimize your life and that's really what tim capitalizes on like that's what i personally try to capitalize on and that's what kind of the four hour work week taught me it wasn't it's not like motivation it's not self-help it's understanding how to structure your life in in the most efficient and optimized way possible and when your life is optimized when you can optimize your time and and your and your exertion like how much how much work uh do doing the doing the least amount of work for the most amount of effort, kind of the 80-20 principle, Pareto's principle is specifically what it's called. Go look that go look that up if you're not familiar. But that's such an important principle. Again, you guys, doing the least amount of work for the most amount of effort. That's why I trade. That's why I got into trading. I recognized a skill. Obviously, you need that skill set. You still need to do your due diligence and whatnot. But doing the least amount of work for the most um, amount of effort, just optimizing your life. So if you guys are interested in checking out something that will just kind of motivate you and uh, motivate you towards optimization, even if it's not this podcast, it's definitely not going to be this podcast. But again, just framing your mind in a way to framing your mind in the sense of just around around optimization all right, so we'll call it there you guys not the most eloquent ending to the ways weekly. But once again, I've been drinking tequila, forgive me, please. If you guys I mean, if you guys enjoyed that, cheers. I'm not even going to do any, do any housekeeping or, or plugs or anything. But cheers to the weekend, you guys. Again, I'll catch you on Tuesday. If you do, I'm going to do a plug I lied. If you guys do want, once again, the Sunday Stock Watch exclusive link to the private YouTube video. First link down below, 15 bucks a month. Check it out. And, uh, again, you guys, have a great 4th of July. Uh, I will see you guys on Tuesday. So, as always, take action. Make waves. Peace, fam. Cheers. Cheers you and then I'll stop it.